Welcome to the channel. Now, we're doing something which uh, I've been waiting to do. I have an MVHR system here. It's not just a simple MVHR system. If you're unversed on what that is, it's a mechanical ventilation heat recovery, okay? It deals with ventilation and air changes. That's the basic thing it does. In normal houses, believe it or not, you have a very basic system. You might have trickle vents and extractor fans, yeah? Yeah, we don't have to talk about that. No, course, so. we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> but when we build sort of modern, well-insulated, fairly airtight buildings, obviously to conserve energy, it's no good trapping all that air in if you're not going to actually change the air. So if you're sucking out nice warm air and it's going out to atmosphere and you're bringing in cold air, then actually you're, you're sort of defeating the object because you're not... You're cooling the house, essentially. So, yeah. So if you have... I don't know, a traditional, as, as it were, in a new build scenario, your, your, you turn your bathroom fan on, uh, the negative pressure pulls minus two air from outside mm, into mm. the house, and, and you're wasting all that energy because you're taking that 25 degree moist air yeah. from the bathroom and just launching it to outside. Yeah. What we're doing is we're taking that, putting it through a heat exchanger yeah. and bringing it back into the house. So essentially, if you said, if for easy maths, if you use 20 degrees inside and zero outside, mm. and you're bringing that in through your trickle vents then your boiler or heat pump or oil boiler or mm. whatever it is has to do 20 degrees of work mm. even if we have an mvhr unit that was only 80 percent efficient for for argument's sake then we're you know we're, we're, we're only doing two degrees of work from yeah. the boiler yeah. instead but that's not all because this garden building is fairly sort of large in the sense of you know it's a fairly big garden building and it still needed to meet building regs for example because it's over a certain size um, and we needed hot water, we needed heating. So Stuart's unit, if you've seen the previous video, will do all of those things with an electrical supply. And I'm not talking about three phase or anything like that. It's a, no, it's just, just explain off, the it's unit. A, it is off of a 13 amp socket. Yeah. So because it runs off a little heat pump, only a 600 watt you know, fridge compressor like you will have in any fridge, yeah. um, we're using Three, three times less energy to get that, that sort of power out. So, yeah. so we'll have a couple of kilowatts via um, the, the air, whether that be heating or cooling, depending on the flow rate, of course, but yeah. that's a bit, you know. Techy. Yeah, it's a bit techy, yeah, <laughs> for, for this. But essentially what we're doing is, is using a heat pump to heat or to preheat or pre-cool the incoming air from outside. Yeah, and there's a water tank built in. That's right. So the first, the, 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 uh, it's a DX coil essentially in the tank. So right. straight out the compressor, the hot gas goes through a coil like you would in your boiler tank. Yeah. But your boiler does hot water through the coil, we do hot fridge through the coil. Okay, fine. So the unit is like a big American fridge, it's that sort of size, you know, it's big. And um, you will have seen that in the previous video, I'll flash a picture up here now. And so there's a hot water cylinder inside. In ours is a small electric boiler too, because that is doing some underfloor heating, should we need it in the winter. Yeah. And then there's the MBHR at the top, but everything's working in conjunction with one another or uh, quite efficiently as well. So, That's right. And these are used big big time in Europe and places like that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. They've been building these. this particular unit. Yeah. Has changed very little since 1974. Amazing. Since the oil crisis. It's only because, you know, traditionally we build rather, you know, leaky, uninsulated houses yeah. in this country that they've come into the fore now. And of course, like we spoke about earlier with, with this building, the way that you build, you know, it's inherently airtight. You, yeah. You, you, you'll find that that, the electric boiler that runs this underfloor heating in yeah. here, I'll, I'll, I'll bet you now a month a year that will need that yeah. will need to come on to to assist the heat pump. Yeah, and I and I have got faith because Stuart has actually you know has built his own um, office space with exactly the same system, and you run that on basically peanuts, don't you? Yeah, so, yeah, yes, yeah. less than a pound a day. Less than well, a I mean, pound a day. Yeah. Used to be. It's yeah. Probably now, it's probably six hundred pound a day now. Yeah. <laughs> the electrical <laughs> prices, but yeah. So run through the commissioning. What are you doing? I can see you've got your anemometer. It's taken me so long to learn that word. All we're going to do is we're going to balance the airflow. So in in here we. We've got everything injected in here as floor boxes. Yeah. So that that'll be the the air that's coming in. Yeah. And we're going to balance that. So it's because MVHR technically is is balanced mechanical ventilation. Yeah. So we want the same amount going out to the same amount coming in. Right. The unit's got four fan speeds. We'll probably set you three because you won't need the, the detail of four. Yeah. But what we'll do is we'll change on the controller the uh, the, the fan speeds to, to so that we can match them up. 
Uh, you, you, the fans are EC fans, so you can change the, the, the fan speed by 1%. So oh, okay. from, from, so they're, they're one, they're from zero to 100, yeah, right. it's completely variable in each four fan speeds. So eight different fan speeds, four extract and four supply. And I'll fiddle around with yeah. those until I get the correct result. Yeah, and for someone like, um, I mean, I'm quite technical, meaning I like to learn and read and learn and read, but let's take the scenario, this is one of my client's places, all they're going to want is a key at the end of the day and a manual. They're going to want to come in, open the door and know that, so once you've set that up as an installer yeah. and a commissioning sort of person, Engineer, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that is it, yeah. And, and we find that generally speaking, that the people who get the most out of them are the people who generally uh, don't touch them. And when yeah, I say yeah. don't touch them, they might go, the only time I would say you need to touch one of these things is in the summer, turn it down to target temperature 18. Yeah. And in the winter, turn it up to target temperature 22. Yeah. And that's it because it, 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 the, the machine is full of sensors. Fine. So uh, it knows what temperature it is outside. Yeah. It knows what temperature it is inside. Yeah. It knows what temperature it's injecting. It yeah. knows the temperature of the evaporator. It knows the temperature of the condenser. Yeah, okay. It knows the temperature at the top of the water tank and the bottom of the water tank. Yeah. And oh. so all it, all it basically does, everything is on demand. Okay. So if it falls beneath you, you know, if your water set at 60, if it falls to 59, it'll start the compressor, do the water. Fine. And if, the same, if it, if it realises that your temperature set is 22 and it falls to 21, it'll start the compressor, start to heat the air. Fine. Great. So well, um, show us the bits that you're going to do or you've done already. Well, so yeah, I mean, I've just, I've just done a pre-check on the commissioning sheet. We just have one that we scribble out before yeah. we do the proper one on the computer and send yeah. it to you once you've finished. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm just going to balance it. So you're going to chop that other one yeah, off now so I, can get, off. so I can get a good seal with the, yeah. with the hood off the anemometer. Um, we've got 34.8 litres a second out. And I'm just waiting to see what we've got in before I start to fiddle, with the, con fiddle with the controller Fine. and match those up. Fine, well I'll get on and do that and then we'll catch up in a second. So when we actually installed the system, well I only helped, okay? So when Stuart and the guys installed the system, you may have remembered from a previous video that there's a series of ducts running under the floor. They terminate to these um, floor vents here, if you like. These are delivering air. It's either cooled air or it's warmed air. So that's one of the advantages of this system. Cut that down to the finished floor, and then there's a grill that goes over the top, and that will enable Stuart to finalize the commissioning, which involves measuring all of the airflow coming through the system and balancing it. So we've got the right amount of extraction in the right places and the right amount of air returning. So I'm gonna cut this down. I'm gonna use a multi-tool flat against the floor and just tease that off. beautiful things these multi-tools what would you have done with something like this before without scratching the floor you know try rubbing a handsaw over there I mean you could put a bit of paper there and there's probably a little bit of leeway but I think this is the ultimate tool for anything like this a bit more tricky getting around the back but I think what I'll do is because the narrow has got quite a narrow body one of the narrowest in its class I'm going to turn turn the actual blade round and come along sideways because there's still enough space there. I can still get exactly what I want. And it's a satisfying job because there's no damage to the floor or anything like that. Um, I think I'll probably take a vacuum cleaner to it and pull out some of the little green dust. But that's it. I mean, that's a really nice job. And then the grill goes into that. So floor grill and floor box, one of the most common problems we do get is that if we do the floor boxes and they're not wedged nicely, the, 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 the screed can push them in to, to turn them into a bow tie shape and then that does become a massive drama. But in this scenario, what should happen there is we slide the grill on like that and that is done. And then if we, once we do that, we can do like a bit of a, bit of a reveal as well. Just take that protective coating off and then we'll have a nice brushed brushed steel floor grill. There we go. Wow, they look good, don't they? Yep. Oh, that is the business, isn't it? I mean, anything shiny and metal looking, you know. Also oh. available in white. In white, okay, say. yeah. I mean, that, that's lovely looking, isn't it? Very sleek. So 
So a 10 4 and a 13 8. It's more like it. 13 9 and 12 and a half. All right, we'll give that a 41. Plays 45. Lovely. I mean, we're way beyond sort of building rogues requirements anyway. So I'm not going to set fan speed three versus two. I'm going to set the boost rate now, but I'm not going to go too far higher because there's really no need. We'll do a fan speed four as well for cooling, obviously, because this unit does cooling. So we'll want to put as much throughput of ventilation at that colder temperature as we can. So we'll try a supplier at 55 and we'll go for extract air at 51. Take it back to the home screen, increase the fan speed to ventilation level three, and then go and retest. So that's a single pipe one. This one will be up around probably eight and a half, nine. So I'm just gonna zip into the controller because we know we're, e we're extract heavy. So I'm gonna ping into the service menu and into the air exchange menu. Oops, too eager there and change the extract level in fan speed two from 50% down to 45% and then go and remeasure. So now we've done the fa all the fan speeds. Yeah. We've set up how it's gonna work. Set that up at uh, 55 for your yeah, hot water. Uh, your day, day for Legionella we will set to Monday. And then the only other thing that we generally set, so ventilation at low humidity is one because that's when it starts to get a bit, so you don't want to low humidity, so you flat, slow the fan speed down. And vent at high humidity is number three for 20 minutes. Fine, okay. So if you have a shower, steamy shower, it'll, real, yeah, it'll realize and it'll go 20 minutes. You can yeah. change that between zero and 60 yeah. if you want. Okay. Uh, it's just a question of fiddling with that bit of the controller so, there. When it's high humidity, when will that kick in? When it reaches that sixty percent, sixty-five percent? It's, it's actually a learnt humidity. So if if it's if it's got a, a regular set of humidity, and then grandma comes to stay, and there's more showers and all that, it'll know. So it'll change its mind as to how often it boosts. Um, and then everything else is 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 set up. But you, what you need to just so so already we've been talking, of course. 23.5 is the extract temperature in there, yeah. which sounds like it's warm, but it's not warm in there at all, no, is it? Because we're cut, yeah, well, 30, yeah, your hand's yeah. 32. So now we're injecting already 17 degrees, 16.9, 16, 16, 16.8. Yeah, 66, and, yeah, exactly. It's so quick, isn't it? Yeah, and there, so that is, that's the T2 sensor, which is just here. And my favorite screening, if I'm ever diagnosing any problems or even just showing people, I mean, the amount of time I spend on the telephone with people saying, yeah, press up, press down, press this, press that. And, and, and all you need to do is come into here. And if you have a look, in the show data screen, it will show you everything that it's up to Fine. at that at that point. So it's in cooling, the bypass is closed, the anode is okay, and then you've got fresh air sensor, which is T1, which is here. So it's 27.9 outdoors. Yeah, the right. supplied temperature now already is 14.7. I mean, it'll pick some up through the ductwork. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can measure the temperature in there. Yeah. It's not, not really, you know, yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll have 18 or, or 20 at uh, yeah, uh, uh, the thing. And then, uh, 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 the back end of the heat exchanger 26.4 condenser so cold side of the heat pump which is now up here because the four-way valve has moved 10 degrees hot side of the heat pump 45 so you evaporate at 45 your condenser at, at, at 10. Fine. extract air like we said from t10 is 23 top of the hot water tank 47.2 bottom of the hot water tank 43.5 very clever now one thing that we'll with, that i'll outline on this video because of the way that they work when it's doing cooling it has no choice other than to heat the hot water Fine. so if that hot water gets to 65 it will no longer do cooling Fine. so you'd have to draw water off yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to 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 continue that cooling because it does that to protect itself from the compressor yeah it's uh, protect itself protect the compressor from overheat okay, should i say fine yeah brilliant so that's the only thing you know sort of a, a quirk of the thing the byproduct of hot is cold mm -hmm. and if you're doing cold it goes in the hot water tank amazing it, absolutely yeah, you know incredible. and annoyingly of course like every renewable then you've got loads of hot water on the day when you need it at least because yeah. you want a cold shower yeah, yeah but yeah. unfortunately you know that's life it knows we're in fan speed three because we're in cooling it's doing hot water the com that's a symbol engineering symbol for a compressor so yeah. the compressor is on and and away we go so we, i think we'll probably go inside and have a feel of our vents brilliant and we will eventually hook it up to an app won't we yeah 
yeah. You just need a little five amp. Yeah. And and the Ethernet cable into the back of the box and then switch then the app on, it. yeah. All right, fine. And on the back of the router there'll be a serial number. And that it'll ask you for that. Oh fine, yeah. That's the router up there, that little white box. Yeah, yeah, it's the internet gateway up the top, yeah. And the five amp goes into where? In, in the, the back box. of the box. With that cable. So you could just whip that off. Yeah, so there's RJ45 on the back, so your Ethernet cable and the five amp fuse, straight, five amp socket straight into there. So we're there. I mean, all I've done is watch on but, and learn. So I have actually got like the, the BPEC qualification for MBHR, but it's been so long since I commissioned a system. Watching you fly around, I can remember the last one I did. Watching you fly around with your experience is painless. I mean, I can remember the math involved and mm. all of the fan speeds. Your system just seems so intuitive. Especially that front screen. Yeah. The front screen with the picture of the house. Yeah. You've got air out, yeah. air in, yeah. air to outside, and fresh air in. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, and, and, that, and that's it. And, and that's yeah. all you need to know. But you can drill down into it further, like we just showed, yeah. into that show data screen. But really, I mean, that's geek level three. Yeah, yeah. That, that, you, that, you, you know, that you're not that's... after. Because everything will be automated and and so like we said if it gets if it, we've set it at 19 if it gets to 22 it'll start cooling mm. um it, you know and it, mm. the hot water set at 55 so if the hot water tank drops below f to 54 it'll start it'll Easy, heat the water yeah. everything's on demand yeah. from the resistors that are set inside yeah. the unit and give an example of where people use these units normally typically Ev everywhere okay. now so we do i do uh, high rise blocks uh, I don't know how many I've got going in at the minute, probably a couple of hundred. Wow. Uh, but we've traditionally worked in passive house and low energy building for okay. the last 15 years. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, they're passive house approved products. Brilliant. So, so they're in the passive house drop down, yeah. in the PHPP. Um, yeah, no, it's about the most stringent test you can get. So. Well, it's the time where I obviously say thanks for being on camera, being on problem. the channel twice now. Yeah. Um, and the nice fact that I you. feel I've learned something as well. And I just love the way the system and now, works. And yeah, now we're in cool, like I say, we're in cooling mode. We haven't got touchy feely television yet, but that is. That is amazing. You know, so we're blowing about 12 degrees. Down there will be probably 16, something yeah. like that. And just as, as, as an aside, today it's 28 degrees outside. Mm. It's a very hot day. And we're currently at 22 in here. And so, I mean, it's a really comfortable temperature and we've only just started sticking that really cold air in. So that's it, we're done. Thanks for joining us. Catch you all again soon.